Hi, hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about unemployment and uh, we'll look at um, how unemployment is measured. We'll talk about what the unemployment rate is and uh, what it tells us and we'll talk about the relationship between unemployment and economic growth um, and we'll also be able to describe different types of unemployment um, that exist as well as explain some of the factors that determine what's known as the natural rate of unemployment. And uh, all of this data or information is in your, your book in chapter 24, pages 616 to 629. When we're talking about unemployment, we begin our discussion by talking about what's known as the labor force, and we need to define what it means to be uh, in the labor force. By defining labor force, what we mean is anyone who is 16 years of age or older and is either working or seeking work, whether it's full or part-time. So uh, if you're 16 years or age, of age or older and you're looking for full or part-time work, you fall into the labor force description. What is not included in the labor force are military personnel, prisoners, because they can't look for work, uh, those who are mentally ill who are not capable of work, people in nursing homes, um, and students. When it comes to workers, there's really three different kind of categories you can put yourself in. You can either be employed, which means that you're doing either full or part-time work. You're unemployed, meaning that you didn't work in the previous week and you're actively looking for work um, right now. Or you can be what's known as out of the labor force. When it comes to being out of the labor force, there's really kind of three types of people who are not part of the labor force or not counted in that number. Um, the first is people who have voluntarily left the labor force, so retirees who no longer want to work um, or someone who is maybe a stay-at-home parent uh, may choose not to work anymore, um, in which case they're not counted as part of the labor force, they're not going to be part of our discussion of unemployment because they're, they're, they're not looking to work. You could also have what are known as discouraged workers, those are people who would like to work but who have looked high and low, can't find a job, and have no longer uh, any belief or faith in the fact that they'll be able to find a job. So they fall out of the labor force because they're no longer looking and don't think they're going to find anything. Marginally attached workers are, are like discouraged workers in the sense that they're sort of a, uh, they've stopped looking right now. They've looked in the past, they've stopped for now, but they're planning on getting restarted again soon. So they're, they have more hope in finding a job than those who are considered discouraged workers. And we can use all this information about who's in the labor force, who's employed, who's unemployed to calculate some important statistics. The first one is labor force participation, which is simply the share of the population involved in the labor market. So you take your total number of people who are in your labor force and divide it by total population 16 or older, multiply it by 100, and that tells you what percentage of your overall population is either working or looking for work. The next number is the unemployment rate, which is the share of your total labor force that's not working. So we've stripped out those who are not part of the labor force, and we just want to know, of those people who are either working or not working, how, what percentage of them are unemployed. And so you take your unemployed workers divided by labor force, multiply by 100, and they get you your unemployment rate. Now, the unemployment rate can be a little tricky, and we're going to look at an example here in a second, but it's important to note that your unemployment rate can actually go up in good times and down in bad times. If your unemployment rate um, goes up, it could be either because there are more unemployed workers or because there are now um, more people in the labor force than there were before. So if there were discouraged workers or marginally attached workers, now they think there's hope, they think the economy is going to get better, so they flood into the labor market, whereas before they were out of it, then the number of unemployed workers and your labor force both rise, and that causes unemployment to go up, even though uh, there are more people hopeful of finding work. At the same time, um, you could have people become very disillusioned with their possibility of finding work, become discouraged workers, in which case they leave the labor force, lowering the number of unemployed workers and lowering the labor force and causing that ratio uh, to go down. And so you could actually see your unemployment rate drop when people are leaving the market, which is a bad sign. You could see it go up when people are entering the market, which is actually kind of counter counterintuitively a good sign. Let's take a quick look at um, how you calculate these with a very simple example. Let's pretend that um, the total population 16 or over is 250,000 people and that um, the civilian labor force is 150,000 of which 125,000 are employed, 25,000 are unemployed, 
and we live in a world where of those who are not part of the labor force, a thousand of them are what we consider to be discouraged workers. In this case, we'd say the labor force participation rate is the number of people in the labor force, in this case, 150,000 people, divided by the total number of civilians 16 or older in the population, which is 250,000. So when I do that, I look and find that the labor force participation rate is 150,000 divided by 250,000 times 100. And so it tells me that 60% of my civilian population is engaged in the labor force. I could also calculate the unemployment rate, in which case I'm worried about the number of people who are not working who are part of the civilian labor force. So in this case, it'd be 25,000 people who are unemployed divided by the 150,000 in the labor force. We multiply it by 100, we get this information tells us that our unemployment rate is 16.67%. But that doesn't really tell the whole story because we have to also recognize that having discouraged workers, um, people who would like to work but aren't, in one respect, the number is actually worse than it may appear. So if you were to look at it, uh, the unemployment rate by including discouraged workers, it's actually um, worse than 16.67%. If we were to pretend that those thousand discouraged workers who are unemployed were to be in the labor force, we would see that um, the unemployment rate is really more like 17.2% when we add that thousand uh, discouraged workers back into both the labor force and into the number of people who are unemployed. But it's also an example of how, you know, if, if it were the situation where the economy was beginning to look better than it did before and those thousand discouraged workers became no longer discouraged but just unemployed, that's where we could see the unemployment rate rise, even though it's a good sign that people are, are beginning to look for work again. One final note on the types of people who are or, un or employed, pardon me, is that being employed doesn't mean you're always happy with your job. It's possible that you could be an underemployed worker, which is somebody who only has part-time work or work in a field they're not interested in, but are working that job simply in order to earn a paycheck. Those people are not happy, and it's not necessarily a good thing, but they don't count as unemployed because, in fact, they do have a job. And so... Um, it's not always the case that having a low unemployment rate is good if you have a large number of people who are underemployed. When it comes to unemployment, there are three different types of unemployment that we look at. There's frictional, structural, and cyclical unemployment. Frictional unemployment tends to be short term. It's people moving from one job to the next um, in short order. It's typically during job searches. Maybe you're getting out of college and you're looking for your first job. and You don't expect to be unemployed for long. It's just sort of the, the mixing uh, of people in the job market, and that tends to um, ensure then that our unemployment rate is always greater than 0%, because there's always somebody who's in between jobs or getting out of college and looking for work. So it is not the case that when we are, quote, at full employment, that employment, unemployment rates are at 0%. We also have structural unemployment that typically exists when there are more workers than available jobs. Uh, maybe it's because there's a change in the demand of goods or technology or, or maybe our workers no longer have the skills necessary to do the job that they're being asked to do, in which case they are considered structurally unemployed because the structure of the economy is such that their labor and their skills are not currently needed in the numbers that those, numbers, uh, those laborers exist. And then we have cyclical unemployment. Cyclical unemployment is due to a downturn in the business cycle. There's a recession going on, for example. And when there's a recession, there's a reduce in the overall demand, which means there needs as a, a reduction in the need for employed workers. People begin to lose their jobs. If there were an expansion, then the opposite would happen, and we'd actually see um, employment begin to rise. So what's the right amount of employment? Well, we talk about in macroeconomics, we talk about the natural rate of unemployment. Um, we know that unemployment is always going to be greater than zero because there's frictional unemployment. But what we're looking for is the natural rate, which is uh, frictional plus structural. Because there's always changes in the economy. We're always going to have people who are frictional. We're always going to have people who are structural. Because there's always uh, new jobs being created in new fields that we didn't have before. And old fields are beginning to die out. So we always know there's those two types of unemployment are always going to exist. So the natural rate of unemployment is the percentage of people who are frictional plus the percentage of people who are structural. And that's the level of unemployment we can expect when there's no downturn in the economy. When unemployment is greater than the natural rate of unemployment, we say that there are cyclical unemployment. It's being created by some downturn in the economy beyond simply the, the, uh, the occasional job switchers um, or people who lack the skills necessary to get a job in the current market. 
there is a relationship between natural rate of unemployment and GDP that also exists. The relationship between unemployment and GDP tends to be um, negatively correlated, meaning um, as GDP rises, unemployment goes down. And when unemployment goes up, GDP begins to fall. And you can kind of see that in the graph, that um, when GDP growth rates are high, unemployment rates are low. Um, when GDP is shrinking, the unemployment rate uh, begins to grow. People become more, more people are out of work than there were before. Or seen a different way in this graph, we see in the shaded bars, those are uh, periods of recession. When recessions hit, unemployment rate rises. When there's expansion, unemployment rates drop. So the connection between unemployment and GDP is inverse in nature. We'll talk more about unemployment, do a couple of uh, activities in class when I see you next, and I will see you then. Bye.